Hey everybody, it's Party Leet, and as we head into the weekend, it's time to kick off our Baldur's Gate 3 Let's Play. Folks, I am immeasurably thrilled for this. When the game first came out in early access, I only played it for a handful of hours and then I set it aside. I said I would wait for this final build to release and then we'd go in relatively blind. So all the twists and turns and wild moments we're going to be experiencing for the first time together, even in Act 1. I'm so excited. With that said, folks, a massive thanks goes out to the developer for providing me with a key so I could check the game out, play it, and showcase it on the channel, of course. And a massive thanks goes out to you for joining. If you'd like to see this Baldur's Gate 3 series continue to completion, and it will be a long one, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving those likes and comments down below. They give me a very quick read on what people are enjoying on the channel, and it lets me know what I should do more of or less of, and I'm always open to feedback as well if you can think of ways that I could make the viewing experience even more entertaining. Plus, feel free to keep me in check in terms of roleplay as well. Those of you that are familiar with the channel know that I focus on roleplaying over min-maxing, and so character creation is extremely important because it determines exactly what kind of decisions we'll make moving forward. Though sometimes, you know, maybe I make a mistake, maybe I do something a little off, and I read all of the comments so you can catch me and check me and I'll course correct moving forward. With that said though, folks, just want to mention really quickly, We've got timestamps down below, so if you want to skip past character creation or the opening cinematics, you can absolutely do so. But for those of you that are hoping to watch the full thing, you can do that as well. Uh, but yes, with that said, I think there's no more time to waste on an introduction. Let's dive right on in with a new game of Baldur's Gate 3. I think we're going to be playing with the balance difficulty to start with. My exposure to 5th edition is relatively minimal, so I want to make sure I'm not, uh, you know, putting myself in a terrible position right off the bat. But maybe as we get more familiar with some of the systems and mechanics, we'll go ahead and up the difficulty into Tactician. But yes, for the time being, let's stick with Balanced and, uh, yeah, let's get this party started. Absolutely nasty. But yes, who are we? Now, this was determined largely in part by the vote that went up on the uh, YouTube community tab. It was heavily, heavily in favor of Bear Thrills. This is going to be our Druid Dwarf, which I must admit is a very interesting combination. And so I'm really excited we'll be able to explore it. Let's uh, let's get to it, right? Now, I've already spent time picking and choosing all of the parts and elements because I didn't want to spend an entire hour building the character while recording it. So I'll quickly go ahead and build our character and actually explain exactly what decisions we've made and why and how they feel relevant. Now, to give you a bit of an explanation as to who Bayar Thrills actually is, for those of you that missed it in my community post, he is, again, a dwarf druid who is fascinated by root and branch over rock and gem. Uh, Bayar spent his time picking flowers and crushing herbs and ultimately wishing he were an animal more than anything else, a veritable outsider. 
Uh, he's jovial by nature, but he's also stout and stubborn if pushed. So he's willing to help people in need until they ask him to do things that would break his oaths or his uh, you know, personal moral compass. He's also infinitely curious. He's a little aloof. Social norms and cues, you know, escape him and I suspect we'll have plenty of hijinks. Eventually in battle as a druid, he's going to uh, take on his namesake and hopefully be able to transform into a bear for fighting, uh, again, living up to his name. But even apart from that, you know, I'm looking forward to really exploring who he'll be as a druid and how he can support the party, probably playing more of a support role, though, of course, capable in, uh, in, in combat in other ways as well, if things do get physical. So uh, yes, a dwarf druid. The cantrips we're going to start with are actually, yes, uh, shillelagh, which I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of, I apologize, and thorn whip. They seem to be, uh, they seem to be decent in terms of utility, and they seem to also lean into, you know, things he might have needed to use for survival out in the wild, you know, pulling uh, fruit off of high trees or even low trees. He is a dwarf after all. And, uh, you know, the occasional scuffle with a wolf or whatever it might be. Because, again, he spent most of his time outside of the mountains amidst the, you know, the the, the glades and, and, and whatnot. So just trying to keep that in mind as I build him out. But, yeah, the cantrips will go with our Thorn Whip and Shillelagh. Uh, we are skipping past Resistance, Produce Flame, Poison Spray, and Guidance. Those feel a little less tied in with the uh, character backstory I have in mind. As far as his actual background is concerned, I had a lot of time, uh, you know, or, or a lot of hesitations with which one I would go with because no specific one felt perfect. I was temporarily thinking that perhaps he's an urchin. Uh, you know, he wasn't necessarily poor per se, he didn't have a bleak childhood, but he was shunned, he was a bit of an outcast. Uh, but then it didn't it didn't fit quite so perfectly. Uh, folk hero felt a little bit closer because it gave him animal handling and survival, and those both felt relevant for somebody who spent his time again in the woods and the glades and stuff like that. So while he's not a hero, he is interested in being maybe a champion of the common people. Like I said, you know he he's willing to help people in need until it forces him to break his own moral compass. Uh, he'll challenge tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless, and in my mind. Mind, that includes, you know, tiny animals that need saving, things like that. But yeah, saving innocence in imminent danger will make your legend grow. This felt the most fitting out of all of the options, and it gives us yes, animal handling and survival, which are both wisdom-based, which is our key stat as a uh, as a druid anyway. So that kind of works out nicely. Again, I don't min-max, but sometimes things fall into place purely serendipitously, and uh, hey, I can't uh, uh, I can't be knocked for when that works out, right? Uh, but if we take a look at our abilities over here, this is again really an expression of who we are and how we expect to operate. Wisdom is going to be our highest stat. I think not only is that helpful because it's our key stat when it comes to casting and all that good stuff, uh, it's also, I think, uh, quite fitting. He's lived among the woods. He's had to kind of survive on his own. Survive, uh, survival is a wisdom-based uh, skill after all. And uh, I do like to think he's, he's quite wise in ways that perhaps other dwarfs uh, can't be because they're so, you know, narrow-minded and, 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 and purely focused on uh, the stone and the mountain. And, and whereas he's been a bit more uh, open-minded in that sense. So we'll take our plus two there and uh, we'll, we'll get this as high as possible. But there is room for some adjustments elsewhere. I think for example, I don't want to be stupid. I don't. I don't think Bear is dumb. Uh, I think he is quite aware of things, but he just doesn't necessarily interpret them or agree with their interpretations. For example, you know, he might know that he's not allowed to just go anywhere in the world. He understands the concept of trespassing, but he doesn't necessarily agree with it. It's all part of the wilderness. Why can't I go there? This is all built on like ground and ground is you know open to the public so why shouldn't i go there again missing out on some of those cues the social norms uh he knows they exist he just doesn't necessarily think that they should or at least that they shouldn't be what they currently are so i'm gonna drop his charisma which is very strange for me because i love playing charismatic characters which is why the other option i threw up for a vote was uh what was it max Rizman, uh the charismatic uh bard that's kind of my standard. So I'm going out of my comfort zone here. I'm really excited for that. We're going to drop his charisma down to, let's say, 10. And let's pop his intelligence up. 
uh, up to 10, I think. I could drop something else as well. This is where I was kind of mulling over it a bit, even during my previous uh, look at character creation. I was like, where exactly do these numbers fall? I, I, I could drop his charisma right down to nine, maybe. That'll let us get his intelligence up to 11. Uh, and I think maybe this is more fitting for him. His constitution being high makes sense. As a dwarf, I think that's uh, quite fitting. He gets that plus one here as well. And his dexterity, you know, I guess we could drop his dexterity a little bit. I mean, look at those, look at those hands. Well, that doesn't focus in on his hands. Look at those hands, though. Like, those don't look very dexterous. So maybe let's drop his dexterity a little bit more and pump his intelligence a bit higher. Oh, we could go even further. Yeah, you know what? That feels... Well, I can't call it optimal. That's certainly not optimal, but that feels more like Bayar to me. And hopefully I've got this right. We, of course, have options to respect now, fortunately. Maybe we come back and reconsider this. But feel free to weigh in on these options. I, I think this makes sense. So he's decently strong, dwarf that he is. He's got a decent bit of dex like dexterity. Again, he's not hewing you know, rock and all that kind of stuff. He's dealing with branches, climbing trees, that kind of stuff. So he's more dexterous than he is strong. Uh, good constitution from all those mushrooms he's been chewing on as he travels through the glades. Uh, decent intelligence again, extremely high wisdom, and uh, yeah, a little aloof, a little unfamiliar with social cues, and, and, and not so charismatic as a result. I think that feels quite right. If we take a look at skill proficiencies, we're going to keep nature, because that I think makes quite a bit of sense for somebody who lives in nature and loves nature and all that good stuff. Uh, but instead of insight, I think, again, because insight is about reading people in situations, which he's not very good at, instead of insight, we're going to go with perception. Just the general awareness when he's out amongst the woods, when it's, you know, when night falls and, and he has to be very wary about what might be nearby. I think a higher perception makes sense. It's also wisdom-based, but I think it's more fitting for Bayar himself. So, yes, we've got our uh, nature and our perception uh, figured out. All of our stats for our skills look alright. He's okay with athletics. Uh, his arcana gets a plus one. Good stuff. Some good plus twos. Again, I think he's open to stealing, for example. So I don't mind his sleight of, ha his sleight of hand sorry, being at a plus two. Again, he understands that he shouldn't steal, but if you've got something and you don't use it, and I need it, why shouldn't I have it? You know, like, uh, I, I want to be very careful not to take this to a goofy extent where it just becomes hijink after hijinks. But I also want to leave it open to some interesting moments, obviously, to see how far we can push the role-playing in this game. Uh, but yeah, overall, you know, survival plus five, he's able to deceive well enough. So he's got some social skills. He's deceptive, he can intimidate. I mean, I yeah, come on. Yeah, I can see him being intimidating. Uh, and he can apparently pull off a good performance, fair enough. And he can be persuasive, I suppose, in that cute sort of way. Uh, but yes, his medicine skill is pretty good. Perception is pretty good. Yeah, feeling, feeling comfy here, feeling comfy here. Let's confirm that, and now let's take a look at our spells. So, of course, we can pick four for the time being, and I've spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out what makes the most sense out of this bunch. I was tempted by something like Speak with Animals or Animal Friendship. Uh, I do think there is room for that going forward, but to begin with, I think Entangle absolutely makes sense. Uh, just when he has to make a quick getaway when he's being hunted, and in a similar vein, actually pun entirely intended, uh, fog cloud kind of makes sense to me as well. When he's uh, when he finds himself surrounded by a pack of wolves or something, he's just like, ah, time to disappear. So fog cloud and entangle make sense to me. Uh, and then I was thinking a charm person is a definite no. Though maybe he ends up relying on magic eventually to get his way with people. That's not how he starts. Uh, otherwise, I was thinking healing word makes sense if he you know, ever finds himself injured. Whoops, I got a my bad. Let's get rid of Goodberry. Let's get rid of Thunderwave for the time being and give ourselves healing word. Again, if he ever gets injured in the middle of his uh, activities, it's a quick way to heal himself and it makes sense for him to be able to do so. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm tempted by Thunderwave. Now, it is a bit of a... It's, it's a bit of a, a, a violent spell compared to some of the other options, but I do have to think about him, you know, surviving in the woods, and, and how did he actually go about doing that? He didn't always run away with the help of Entangle and Fog Cloud and heal up with Healing Word, but, uh, you know, he used his club with the help of uh, Shillelagh, and uh, he used his Thorn Whip, and he perhaps used Thunder Wave for the opposite effect of Thorn Whip. So that's where I'm leaning here. Honestly, that last option is one I'm... Uh, I've been flip-flopping on for a very long time, uh, so maybe maybe, maybe it could be something else, but that feels like the, the, the right call over here compared to some of the other options, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. Nonetheless, folks, uh, that is the overall 
you know, construction of Bayar Thrills, but let's take a look at his appearance. Also something I spent a ton of time on uh, before we actually started recruiting, recruiting, recording, sorry, what? because there, there are a lot of options. So, identity, male, voice, seven, I quite liked. Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. That's, that sounds right. You know, serious, but not too serious. That feels like it's in the right space. Uh, in terms of the overall faith shape, I, there was quite a few that I liked. I mean, these are all quite good, but I was leaning towards this one over here. Head three. That felt that felt best. He looks like he's been in the sun, you know? Uh, just in terms of, like, his... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, complexion and stuff. So that feels right to me. I'm okay with the skin tone we've got. And let's get a couple of nicks on here. I don't want like massive battle scars or anything. I don't think that makes sense. I mean, maybe he got mauled by a bear at some point, but uh, I quite like this. It's just like a couple of small nicks here and there. You know, like he's been climbing trees and just <laughs> rubbed his face against a sharp bark or something. A little, a little bit on the silly side. I uh, don't want him to be too old. Not that this changes too much with this particular head. You can see some of the wrinkles getting deeper, but not too old, not too freckly. Overall, we're good, and, uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> right. Right, I forgot. Um, let's, uh, I need to go into the settings and make sure that nudity is off, because, uh, I will get demonetized. Let's keep this as default for the time being. Um, but yes, I, uh, I imagine it won't come up this first episode, but I need to flip my settings for sure. Either way, let's move on to body art. Here, I'm thinking we go with, uh, where'd my option go here? There we go. This Tattoo 35 is what it's called, but it doesn't feel like a tattoo. It feels a lot more like pigment, you know, like woad or whatever it might be. In order to get that look, though, I think we got to flip this to like a nice blue over here. Bring its opacity down a touch. There we go. That's feeling that's feeling kind of nice, right? Like, again, he's using the, the herbs out there. He's crushing them and making this face paint and all, and all that good stuff. Uh, I like this look a lot because you can kind of see the texture of... Uh, uh, of it being more painterly rather than a tattoo, especially if we darken it a bit, you can see it a bit more. That feels good to me, yeah. Some of these other ones are really cool too, there are a lot of really cool options, um, and I spent a lot of time investigating and figuring out which one we want to go with, uh, but ultimately, yes, I wanted something that felt natural, you know, something that felt like it wasn't, uh, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, because a lot of tattoos are natural as well, you, like, whether it's ink or charcoal or whatever, it is natural too, but I more mean uh, something, um, done at the moment, done sort of spontaneously. There we go, that's what I was looking for. So it was either this or this, and this one felt maybe a little bit too much for him. So I think this is where we're sitting here. Cool. No piercings or anything. Uh, let's take a look at his eyes. I quite like his eyes, actually. The hazelnut is nice. Uh, we can go with something a little different. Ooh, that's mysterious. Purple. Ooh. Oh, I like that. It goes nicely with his... Uh, with his like face painting as well. All right, you know, let's go with that. Cool. Uh, makeup, not gonna do makeup. I did experiment with it a little bit. Like it looks cool, but it also looks kind of, with the purple especially, it looks kind of uh, evil and I'm not going evil. If anything, with him being who he is, kind of aloof and uh, he understands rules, but doesn't necessarily follow them. If I were to put him on the alignment chart, he's definitely chaotic, but he's, 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 uh, he's either neutral or good. I think so, he's not, he's not evil. Uh, in terms of his hair, again, so many options. Some options that don't necessarily fit him, and many options that do fit him. I'm going to go with, if I can find it again, uh, nope, not this one. Like, I wanted something that felt, like, a little unkept, uh, but also, you know, like, it's like it's feigning uh, being in control. And there was a really good, there was a really good option over here. I mean, this one's pretty good, the foxtail, but that wasn't it. I'm sure I'll find it eventually. Um, there are just so many options here. Not the top knot, not the knave braid, no. It was, man, there are so many options though. It's it's quite wild, but I think I found it. The Arabel ribbon, yes. So again, you can see he understands what a fade is supposed to be, but he's not very good at maintaining it. He's got, you know, the semblance of a line over there that he's kind of keeping a track of, but overall kind of unkept. And the uh, the little bun back over here is also kind of messy, you know? Uh, I like it. I think it says a lot about his character. And his uh, beard as well is a, a topic of great discussion. Um, I was thinking that we could give him something a little bit bigger, uh, something a little bit more, you know, braided or something, uh, or maybe something with little tassels. But uh, I kind of I kind of like the feeling of this. 
Again, a little unkept, not too organized. He doesn't spend the time to braid it or anything. He's too busy, I don't know, picking flowers or something to focus on his uh, his aesthetic, as it were. And uh, no reference to his uh, his background. Maybe that says something. Maybe that means something. Uh, but but no reference to you know the metals or anything like that. So I, I quite like this. Judicious, it's called. We'll see if he lives up to that. But there you have it, folks. There you have it. That is Bayar Thrills. Spent a bit of time with character creation over here, despite me already having run through it. But I wanted to give you guys an idea of exactly who we are, what we're playing as, and what that might mean as far as... Um, you know, decisions we make during the campaign. Again, if you're ever feeling like a call I've made doesn't quite line up, then I want you to call me out. I want you to go, actually, that wasn't really in character. And I can course correct because I love staying on top of RP like that. It is my, I love it. It's, it's an absolute passion of mine. I'm, I'm big on tabletop. I'm big on uh, CRPGs as well. But yeah, dude's looking good. I'm feeling pretty pleased with the overall setup over here. This is not a face I'll grow tired of after 20 hours of play or anything. So with that done, yeah, it's time to proceed. Character name, Bayar Thrills. I'm quite, quite pleased with this. Quite pleased with this, nonetheless. Let's uh, have the thrills begin, shall we? You need a guardian. Right. Of course, I gotta pick a guardian. All right, it's okay, I got a plan for this. I thought we were ready to dive in and start right there. We're gonna go with an elf. We're gonna go with an elf, and I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, making them split. Let's randomize appearance a couple of times, and no, 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 I still want an elf. I wish I could pinpoint certain specifics. All right, well, bam. The reason why I want an elf is maybe this is why he has an inclination towards uh, the woods and the trees and the glades and all that good stuff. Um, very, uh, very, uh, what's it called? Like dichotomous with our dwarven selves, right? Um, I don't know what the guardian is or does. Like I said, my exposure to early access was minimal, uh, and I kept it minimal on purpose. So I don't know what this means, and I love it. We'll find out together. Now, I believe, we actually dive in and venture forth.
All right, here we go. Again, somewhat familiar with the immediate opening acts, of course, but uh, curious what's changed, because they were mentioning a lot of things that changed even in Act 1, so I, I wonder about that. But uh, yeah, our first objective is to find our way off the Nautiloid. We've been abducted by Mind Flayers and infected with some kind of parasite. We need to find a way off this ship, and hopefully we're able to accomplish that in today's episode, because that'd be a good uh, a good, good spot to, to, to get to. Uh, what do we got up here? Mind Flayer pod? Nope. We got nothing there. Anything at the nursery over here? This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. Ooh. Uh yeah, investigate the pool. Again, I'm I'm the curious type, right? So if the opportunity comes to investigate, I shall investigate. Come on, baby. Hey, alright, good stuff. Off to a good start. Get that plus one in there. God, I love these animations. The casing is fragile. The slightest touch could cause it to crumble. Reach toward the pool. Well, if nothing else, that's taken care of all the parasites, hopefully. Let's take a look at this mind flare, see what he's got on him. Amethyst, don't mind if I do. What else we got? Looks like this is a relatively empty space. Let's go ahead and well, we don't need to restore, uh, so let's not uh, let's not do that. Let's head on through the uh, sphincter, as it were, and uh, see what waits ahead. I believe this is yeah okay. I, I vaguely remember this. We've got another oh, a little goblin over here. Got for me, buddy. What you got for me? Some gold. Don't mind if I do. Just taking a peek. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. Very well. What do we have here? Oh, okay, just sitting down. <laughs> Very well. Just take a take a breather. Take a moment over here, buddy. Uh, what else we got? Rune slates. Got some rune slates. A schematic of a nautiloid flashes into your mind. Nerves, sinews, as much living being as ship. Very well. What do you got for me? Nothing. What about you? Also nothing. I wonder if they're all kind of connected. Fair enough. Back over here, we've got a tablet. Check this out. A thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, humans, and more flash behind your eyes. Very well. Okay. A lot of learning to be had over here. Again, you know, tapping into my uh, curiosity and, and intelligence. But I do believe, yes, there's uh, something to uh, interact with over here. Head on up and see what's going on. Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. I could hear you. Go ahead and check this out. Mirnaf. Yes, you've come to save us from this place. From this place, you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please. Before they return! They return. Alright, who am I talking to? A man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer. A minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. I don't like that. I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. You sound afraid. Why? Or simply destroy the brain. Hmm. Okay. You sound afraid. Why? It's a newborn. Does this fall under something that I'd want to uh, protect? Or no? I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards no. You sound afraid. Why? The enemy. So many enemies. Oh, I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body, from this case. Free us, please. Oh man! All right, let's uh, let's inspect the exposed brain over here. Come on, baby. Got the plus one, DC ten. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That was closer than I expected. We got this. We're okay. You notice a demon. A swelling of the brain, causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. Alright, now, again, I gotta put myself in the shoes of Bear, right? 
I'm curious. I want to know what this thing is. I'm familiar with the uh, intellect devourer, it seems, but uh, I, I imagine I've never seen one in this kind of a position or in this kind of a situation. I could attempt a cerebral extraction, staying mindful of the swelling. I could gently prize the brain from the skull, or I could try to break the skull. Ah, breaking the skull seems too violent for Bayar over here until, you know, maybe further down his... Uh, his character development. But let's try a cerebral extraction, staying mindful of the swelling. When I said he's cap capable of medicine, I wasn't necessarily thinking surgery, but uh, but here we are. Let's try it. Got an ad got advantage as well, so hopefully this will work out. Well, you have a decent chance. Are you for real? Oh, plus three. We're good. Poor. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Forgot about my plus three on wisdom, but that's good. Success. Let's get this bad boy out. The brain lifts from the skull. But you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient, should it prove a threat. Oh, control over other things? Mutilate the brain? That doesn't sound very happy-go-lucky. Spare the creature. Any injuries might weaken it and, you know, leave it to die. So, perhaps foolishly, I shall spare it. pauses, listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm! At the helm, we are needed. Alright, what's at, what's, at, what's at the helm? What's at the helm? The brain tenses, as though querying an unseen advisor. Do you not hear it? We will not survive here. We are needed to navigate. We are needed to leave this realm. All right, let's go. I don't know if I want to go with him. <laughs> but oh, uh, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. All right, let's go. To the helm we go. We are going to the helm. Man, newborn intellect devourer. Oh, he's actually part of our party. Ah. Huh. Interesting. Okay, fair enough. The um, thing to note, by the way, is that I will, from time to time, as you may have already noticed, make suboptimal decisions. And that is because I'm role-playing. And role-play comes above all else when it comes to, uh, to these kinds of games for me. Uh, Min-maxing is fun for some. And to be clear, I have zero judgment on folks who min-max. Like, that is absolutely a valid and viable way to play. Uh, it's just not my preferred way to play. I like making decisions that fit the character, that are sometimes not optimal, that are sometimes straight up bad decisions, but they're characterful. Because that's how you end up with, you know, hijinks, but not forced hijinks. You're not just making a situation happen for the sake of making one happen. You end up with one because your character has flaws and they don't get things right all the time. So that's something to note as you uh, as you follow along with this uh, with this playthrough, folks, as we move further along as well. Holy, ooh, hello. Keep on going here. Oh, right, of course, this moment. rush past a dragon swing a silver sword and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes oh. <sighs> my head what is this <sighs> squall you are no thrall flakith blesses me this day together we might survive what made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be geek. Mind flayers. Yeah, that sounds problematic. So we're turning into mind flayers. There must be something we can do. We can do nothing until we escape. That 
must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. As for that thing, it will remain tame as long as it believes we are thralls. It may be of use in the fight to come. All right, well, that's different. This used to play, I remember this, this used to play very differently. You used to be able to sneak up to this spot and and, and hide and stuff. I, I remember this and the layout's completely different too. Oh, wow, they weren't joking when they said they changed the opening act. Uh, and also, it's kind of cool that uh, the uh, uh, the intellect devourer was remarked on in that cutscene. I'm, I'm really, because again, that could have played very differently if we hadn't interacted with it and hadn't extracted it and it wasn't there. You know, how would that play out if that was the case? Anyway. Uh, it is the case. And what can we do over here? We got claws, 4 to 10 damage, 2d4 plus 2 slashing. What else? Jumping, disengaging, hiding, claws, and dash. Okay, fair enough. Let's, uh, what are we dealing with here? 6 HP, 6 HP, and 6 HP across the board. There's an opening fight, so I'm sure it'll be easy. Let's bring you up to here, buddy. Get some work done. Oh, get a lot of work done, apparently. Straight up kill that guy. Uh, and let's go ahead and pull back. I'd like to keep this guy alive if possible. Don't want him to get surrounded and, and, and murdered, but that's your turn done. Over we go now to death. you. Yeah. You bow, you I'll get the job done over here as well. Beautiful. Nice and easy. Uh, pull back a touch just because we can. And that's your turn done. My feet. And up to Bayar. Can we get all the way there? We cannot. Nor do we have range capabilities. So why don't we go ahead and uh, or perhaps just group up with uh, Lazel a little bit and you, Shillelagh? Sure, it's a cantrip, so why not? Beautiful. Oh, that, like, subtle glow. Love it. Yeah, let him come to us. End the turn there. Come through, buddy. I mean, it... Nice. It's not even gonna get to Bayar's turn, because either the uh, Intellect Devourer or uh, Lazel's gonna get the job done. Yeah, there you go. Shouldn't have popped the Shillelagh, but I again, it's a cantrip. It's fine. I'll take that compliment. Incinerated Mind Flare, Potion of Speed, Caustic Bulb, Skull, and Void Bulb. Take all, thank you. Check out what these imps have got as well. A <laughs> scimitar, a straight up scimitar. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'll grab that, don't mind me if I do. What do you got for me, buddy? We got a hand axe. Got some dead thralls and another imp down there. What am I looking at? No one took any damage or anything like that, so that's good. Ooh, light crossbow. Hmm. Yeah, take that. Oh, we got our dead thrall over here. Some gold. What's up top over here? Looks like there isn't much to explore in this general area. Oh, did I? Yeah, I've already checked you out. Checked everybody out over here. And this is where we came from, or would have come from. Yes, correct. All right. Head on over. We can restore if we need to, but we don't need to. We've got a dead thrall up there to pick things up from as well. Go ahead and take a peek over here. Some more gold. Can't complain about that. And we've got this imp back over here as well. I don't think I... Yeah. Go for it. Don't need restoration, but hey, why don't we pop in there anyway? Sure. It doesn't do anything for us, but hey, it is what it is. Another death thrall over here. Cool. Take all that. Just investigating if we actually need to change our uh, armor or anything out right now, but no. No, we don't. Potion of healing. Don't mind if I do. And let's head on up. As I see, our objective is up over there. Escape the Nautiloid, right? pushing through. Party's coming with us. Mm, saving. Makes me nervous. <laughs> let's push through. Let's push through. It's just the opening act. I doubt things will go horribly wrong right off the bat here. No. Shouldn't speak too soon. And what do we have here? Alright. We got something going on over there. Alright. What are these sigils? Because I'm obviously I want to touch something. What's going on here? Oh, Arcana checks. How hard are these? Another mystery. Oh, man. I, I mean, they, let's go for it. Aggression. Okay. Okay, so three buttons, three sigils. That one's aggression. I don't know what those two are. All right, very well. 
Let's let's see what's going on over here. Sacrifice cultist and someone back there as well. Let's let's investigate these sacrifice cultists first, just in case. Dead, but he's totally unresponsive. Very well. What do you got for me, buddy? Backpack, another thing to touch up there. Life flickers in his eyes, but he seems totally unaware of his surroundings. Yeah, it's like completely lobotomized or something. Jeez. Okay. What's going on over here? You! Get me out of this damn thing! We have no time for stragglers. Uh, she's not a straggler. She's a survivor just like us. Um, yeah, look for a latch that might open the lid. Again, we try to help people unless it breaks our moral compass. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? I mean, to a degree, yes. The pod's stuck fast, I can't free you, or I'll go look around. There must be some way to get this thing open. Yes, absolutely. Some time can be spent on this. Try that contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! Yep, let's check it out. Oh boy. The console appears dormant. Okay, look for a switch or release. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first, but then you spy an empty socket. Hit it? Maybe? Empty socket. We'll, we'll take a look around. We'll come back in a bit. We'll come back in a bit. I don't think hitting it's going to solve the problem. Not going to blow you up. We've got a backpack over here. What do you got for me? Some gold and some malachite. Don't mind if I do. Let's take a peek over here. So, this way to escape the Nautiloid. So, we'll go up that way. Oh, and there's stuff here, it looks like. Yeah. Manuscript. We got some reliquaries. All right, what do you got for me? Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a Gip Yankee warrior, and centuries of darkness. And that's just us. What is this dark mind? Brain in a jar. All right, I'll take it. This thing is locked. Can I not pick it up and add it to wares and take it with me? Yes, I can. All right, good stuff. And this burnished necklace as well. Don't mind if I do. Yep, all mine. No one else is using it. I'll gladly take it. I'm sure I'll find, uh, find a use for it. Okay, so what's going on over here? Because if that's the way to escape the Nautiloid, I want to check what's happening up over here. And see if there's any solutions available to us. Ah, gold key. Hmm. And a scimitar. Okay, that, that key might be for the reliquary. We'll take a look later. This woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. Oh, she's done for, I think. What do we have here? Another button to push. Some dead thralls, a chest, a slave mind. Ah, before we push the button, let's take a look around. <laughs> Gold, bottle, and a rune. Strange energy buzzes. No, no details there. Let's take them all for the time being. Ah, there you go. Okay, cool. Pick this slave mind up, and let's take a look at this chest. Potions of healing. Don't mind if I do. All right. I guess we could push this button. Curiosity getting the better of me. Um, I, I don't remember what it does. Genuinely, I don't remember what it does. Place your hand on the console. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change... Okay, that may have been a mistake. Change her. Changed at the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this may be our fate. Now uh, we gotta get out of here. That that was bloody beard. I'm not waiting around for that to happen to us. No, no, I am not. Born mind flayer stares at you, weak and dazed. I don't. I don't know if I should, like, destroy it or something. Let's leave it be. Uh, she mentioned that as long as we pretend to be thralls, us will be on our side. So for the time being, let's leave it be and let's uh, let's step out of here. And I do believe we have a solution for the other uh, pod over there. Though, you know, I imagine I'd be a little concerned that whatever I think the solution is might actually cause that very same change over here. However, 
However, I seem pretty confident about my uh, my solution, so let's go for it. Let's go for the console it. Appears dormant. I think we've got this. Insert the rune into the socket. The console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captive? Or transform her like that other unfortunate? Wow, how many uh how many variant readings of that were there? Like if we hadn't experimented with that we wouldn't have that reading we'd have a different line that's kind of cool i i always love those little things where you go hang on a second how could this be different anyway uh let's take a closer look at the powered up console just to be safe all right this should be uh, i don't want to call it easy but we got it all right good stuff we got the plus one on top of that good clean success over here take that 17. the pulsing glow and organic lines of the device make it seem more like a beating heart than a machine this device is different from the one that caused the other captive to transform perhaps it will open the nearby pod all right that feels relatively convincing place my hand on the console suddenly you feel a hideous squirming in your head the parasite then discomfort fades and another sensation washes over you connection authority interesting illithid and wisdom will the pod open we got a plus three from our wisdom difficulty class two i mean this should be super easy go for it oh my god that was a lot closer than it had any right to be. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I really need to stop taking these things for granted. It's it's literally a dice roll after all. I play tabletop. I know I I should yeah. <laughs> you feel the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. Oh, come on. At last. Thought I was done for. Get on your feet, Shadowheart. I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness. Because you have a gith with you. You keep dangerous company. Um, we're in a dangerous situation. Yeah, dangerous company is what you need in a fight. Yeah. Fair point. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. I think that sounds like a good idea. I mean, did you feel what I felt just before? We were in each other's heads. Yeah, I want to I wanna know. Again, I could see it as a player, but as a character. Did you feel what I just felt before? We were in each other's heads. I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. But that'll have to wait. Are we going to help each other or not? Yes, absolutely. Let's get going. I am Bear Thrills. Shadowheart. One moment. What was... Yeah, what was that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. Oh, I'm not so easily convinced, but all right. <laughs> gained a touch of XP there. She gained a lot more than us. I guess she was playing catch up probably for, for XP. But let's uh, get a move on. I don't think there's anything left over here. We messed with the uh, manuscript already. No one needs any healing. We're all topped up. Yeah, feels pretty good. Feels like we're ready to move on. Over now to the uh, escape the nautiloid to, to the to the to the helm, as it were. What do we got here? <laughs> Another restoration. Fair enough. Don't think I need it. <laughs> Still, keep on creeping on. Let's go. You're nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. Kenyank. Yeah, for real. I don't know what that means, but for real. Like, <laughs> we don't need friction right now. Who knows what's ahead? Come on. Here we go.
this one, though. We must escape. Now. Do it. We will deal with the Geich after we escape. Connect the nerves. Nerves. We will connect them. Let me be All right, what do we got over here? We got the Mind Flare, we got the Lesser Imp, we have a Lesser Elsbor, another Lesser Imp, that's all. Oh no, we got uh, Commander Zulk as well. 150 HP, that is really tempting to take on, isn't it? That's really tempting to take on. We got 15 turns to reach the transponder before the Nautiloid crashes. So if we move extremely quickly, we might be able to pull this off, but I don't know. We do have, I think, as full a party as you could have at this point in time. So maybe we try it. Uh, the Mind Flare is on our side, but, you know, took a pretty decent beating already. All right, let's take care of these uh, lesser imps that are near us first. We have this Hell's Boar with 8 HP and the, uh, the imps with 6. Let's send you up over here. Get the job done nice and easy. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, and that's your turn almost done, but let's go ahead and creep up this way. Again, just trying to rush up over there if possible. I would love to, uh, to, to eliminate Commander Zalk there if possible. And your turn. Next up is our good friend here. We can get in there. Can we avoid this trouble? Is that going to cause us pain? It is fire. All right, in that case, ah, right, we can't. Just, we, we don't have independent turn orders or anything. Um, suppose I could hop. That's a bonus action. So if I use that bonus action, I can go in. I can't use the pommel strike if I do that, but I will still be able to do a regular action. So if I jump, making sure it's a bonus action. Jump. Get on over to here and get the strike in. Avoid being set on fire, shall we? Good stuff. Good hit. And I should be able to keep moving a little bit up to there. Let's go. Cool. I believe that's our turn. Oh, we got a bit more movement left. Go for it. As far as you can go. End our turn there. You next. Can't get up to there. We do not have range capabilities with you. What do we got here? Shield of Faith, Guiding Bolt. Okay. Uh, resistance, Sacred Flame, Charm Person, Disguise Self, Blessing of the Trickster, Guidance, Inflict Wounds, and Healing Word. Um, guiding Bolt is a spell. It would take a spell slot. It is not a cantrip, unfortunately. We got Sacred Flame. It's a, that's a cantrip. Okay. 18 meter range. Should be able to hit you. Well, let's move up as well. Well, actually, we can get the hit first. Let's go for it. 65% chance. I'll, I'll I'll pull the trigger. Let's go. Damn. All right. Fair enough. Keep moving up. Yeah. That was unfortunate. But end your turn there. I think we're good. Shield of Faith. I don't think we need that. We don't need Healing Word yet either. Now, I, I could actually shove uh, Lazel further up ahead if I wanted to, I think. I don't know how much damage it would cause, but uh, let's let's leave that be. Despite their uh, friction, let's leave that be. End the turn there. They are. Let's pull you up as far as we can go. And I say we. Oh, you know what? I could. Okay, if I pull up to here, I could use Thorn Whip hypothetically. Ah, he's just too far away. So let's go ahead and pop uh, Shillelagh then. I could also get the fog going, so I could push up, I suppose. But now nah, let's 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 go ahead and get Shillelagh over here. That'll help us cause a bit more damage as we move up. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm going to have to say it a lot more. And we do have Caustic Bulbs and Void Bulbs to use. A Caustic Bulb might come in handy. 1d4 Acid Damage. Throw it to coat it. Good to coat the target, the ground, or anything else nearby in Caustic Brine. Might be worthwhile, but for the time being, end the turn. Get some damage out here. Not like that. This guy's going to pop a shot. Going to miss. Okay, good stuff. We're okay. We're hanging in there. Get you as far as you can go, I suppose. Which isn't very far, truth be told. He's still at max HP, and our Mind Flare over here is not looking too good. We might need to abandon this uh, this plan. 14 turns left. Can you get up there? No. But you do have range capabilities, though. You do have range capabilities. And you've got Rush Attack. Charge forward and attack the first enemy in your way, possibly pushing them off balance. Might be for when we get a little bit closer. But yes, let's... Uh, Creep up as far as we can. Taking position. Then we'll pop a shot from here. Can we reach as we can? 30% high defense. Yikes. That bad, eh? That bad. Ah, go for it. What else are we doing? Apparently getting a critical hit. Okay, I'll take it. 
Don't need second wind. Nope. Hmm. No, we don't need that. Pommel strike, we gotta be a lot closer for that. Fair enough, so that's your turn done, I believe. Could have dipped in the fire, I suppose, en route, but I wanted to close the gap and just cause damage per turn as quickly as possible. So end the turn there. You're up next. Let's head on up to here, sure. And I think we'll pop another uh, Sacred Flame. Again, it is a cantrip, so should be okay here. 40%, 65%. I mean, geez. Let's try and hit this guy again. Let's try and hit the imp again. Come on. God damn it. That's okay. We're fine. End our turn there. Over to Bear. Get you... Let's take a look at this Hell's Boy. I wonder what it's got for me. Nothing. Great. Cool. So let's move you up to here. Figured we were right next to it, so we might as well, because there's nothing else we can do. I could pop a Fog Cloud up in this general area. It'll blind us. We can't attack from range, but we should be able to sneak in the Fog Cloud, get close to the enemy, and hit them with melee, and perhaps distract this uh, lesser imp as well, so it decides to come down this way, as opposed to up over here, allowing us to just proceed. I don't know what it would do for our Mind Flare, though, and I wonder how it will affect uh, Commander Zalk, but uh, I say we, we pop the trigger. I say we try it. Go for it. Really love the... Um Really love the effects. Yeah, so he has been blinded as well. All right, fair enough. End the turn there. Don't tell me how to live my life. How did you... It's okay, don't drag him too far away. I gotta, I gotta keep him close to me. Everyone's telling me to ignore him. We got 13 turns. We got time. Transponder's not too far away. It's kind of far away, actually. Yikes, okay. But he's he's on route. Let's go. In we go. If we keep missing, then I might have to reconsider. Let's get past him. Let's go. And your turn there. Pull you up. Ooh, disadvantage, right? Because we're blinded. Let's try it. Let's try it. Go for it. Got the hidden. Good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, pommel strike as well, bonus action, let's go. Got a crit on that, love it, okay, cool. <laughs> Down to 119. Uh, let's keep you put over here. You can come through. What do we want to do over here? Firebolt, hand trip, 1d10 fire damage. It's an action, do we have any bonus actions we could use? Shield of Faith, Guiding Bolt, again that's a spell. Sacred Flame, action. Really hoping for other, like, bonus action ways of getting damage out there. But all we got is our, our main hand attack or concussive smash, 2 to 7 damage. Potentially dazes the target. I guess I could try for that. Sure, alright. Roll up. Concussive smash. 9%. Oof. Of course I'm going to miss that. Alright, let's pull you up this way a little bit. And your turn there. Not much else we can do. Shield of Faith. Nope. So and your turn there. Is all that matters. Up over here. Let's get this task completed. Good stuff. And let's move in this general direction. I'm blinded as well. This was maybe a bad idea. Good stuff. Good stuff. Less good. Alright. Go for the hit. I'll take it. Got him sub 100. So there's that. Still 12 turns to go. Stay put, turn you around. Uh, yeah, go with the stab. Good stuff. And pommel strike. I wonder about... Nah, we're good, we're good. Did I shove you? Knocked him around, got him blinded again, I suppose. Um, keep the gap closed, let's go. Can't be standing in this fog. Shouldn't have shoved. Shouldn't have shoved. Come up this way. Go for the hit. Damn it. When it, we might need to get a move on. No choice but to keep going. And let's go in from here. Here we go again. Bit of damage. All right, cool. Sub uh, sub ninety. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. End the turn there. I don't know if I can like if I shove him up that way. No luck. Athletics failed. End the turn there. Did the damage there. Okay. He stepped out. So he's not blinded anymore, and I can probably chase him and, and end up not blinded too. 
Uh, let's get an attack over here. Let's go. Can't miss, buddy. You can't miss. Victory awaits. Pull you up to here. We're good. Wonder. Four to seven damage. Nah. Stick with this. I've got my lacerate as well. I'll try that, actually. Go for it. If we get the hit in, that could be quite helpful. Or we'll miss. Cool. Sounds good. They put. Pull you up this way. Can't believe I'm so focused on this. Um, yeah, let's go in for the regular strike. 1 to 10 damage, 2 to 7 damage. Good try the fire. 6% chance to hit. Target is too close. Pull back a little bit. 25% chance to hit. It is just a cantrip. God damn it. Why am I, uh, why am I trying to fix what isn't broken? Should have just kept uh, swinging. Try and come up from uh, this side. Get a hit in. Good stuff. Good stuff. We're getting some work done. 61 HP. Okay. 11 turns to go. Yes! Good stuff. If he can keep causing that much damage, we might actually be able to pull this off. Though the Mind Flayer is almost taken care of as well. Gotta be careful about that. Oh man, you can't miss. And you turn there. Just trying to figure out if there's absolutely anything else I can uh I can do right now to help out. Can't last rate again, just a regular main hand attack, I suppose. Alright. Go for it. Oh man, no. Need these hits to land. Come on, 30%. <laughs> this is rough. Time to push my luck again. Time to push your luck again indeed. Let's go. Come on. Come on. That's not good. That was a bad that was a bad turn. That was a bad turn across the board there. Oh, now he misses too. Come a little closer. Oh. What is this? Oh, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> we gotta get out of here. So this guy's almost our mind flare is almost dead. And we got reinforcements rolling in. With 82 HP, what, each, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's time to move. Nine turns remaining, not a chance. There's not a chance. All right, let's go. <laughs> it was worth a shot. We tried, we tried. It was worth a shot. That's your turn done. You can't, uh, oh, you can dash. Let's uh, make our way over. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and end the turn there. Victory awaits. Oh, God, it's so, we were so close. Can you, can you do it, is the question. I don't see why not. You've got opposable thumbs. All right. Taking a chance here. All right, here. Let's hit and, let, like, hit and move. Right? That makes sense. Oh, no. It's clear. Hurry, before they strike. Ooh. Or imps. Oh, that's not good. And another... Hellsborn. Okay, that's really not good. Let's let's move up. We gotta stay focused over here. Take that. Thank you very much. Get you creeping up that way too. And your turn there. Down over here. I mean, we can't get up here and hit, so we might as well take a swing over here. Or I guess I could use a fire bolt. Fine. I think it's time to get serious over here. Maybe the mind flare will get the job done. Maybe the mind flare will die. Let's go. Up to there. Pop that fire bolt up over here. I'm thinking. Let's, uh, let's hit you, just because you're further away. Good stuff. Wow, that was good. That was good. And your turn. They are. Let's rush up. And I wonder, actually, if I pop and tangle somewhere down here as these guys roll up, maybe. They can fly, though, so I don't know. I don't know. All right, we're moving up. End the turn there. Hope for the best. Ah, he's going to miss. We didn't stand a chance. We didn't stand a chance. A couple of bad dice rolls there. And now these guys rolling up as well. God damn. Down goes the Mind Flare. And now he's coming after us. <laughs> I, I think we might be able to skip past these guys and just get the job done here. Eight turns remaining. That's not the part I'm worried about. I'm worried about him turning his attention to us. And, uh, and these guys rolling up as well. Okay, let's see what we can do over here. To the transponder. Let's go. Tell me you can get it done. 
this creature can't activate the trans. Damn it. Alright. It's okay, it's not too late. Not too late. Let's let's attack the lesser Hellsborg, clear the path over here. Um, and end your turn there, sure. You should hopefully be able to Ooh, okay, that's not great. I wonder if I rush attack you. How much damage does that do again? Four to seven? Might get the job done. Got the job done. And now we can keep moving as well. Get a little bit closer, right? Just a little bit closer. And your turn there. Shadowheart, I wonder. Inflict wounds. Use up a spell slot like that? Or is it time to leave? I could get a firebolt down over here and then try to get out of here. 25% chance to hit. What else are we doing with our action though, right? Hey, I actually got the hit in. Cool. And now let's go. We're, we're in some trouble over here. And your turn, Bayar, are you going to try and topple this guy? 40% chance. You know what? Let's go for it. Let's try it. Damn. With a glow, I thought we succeeded, but nah, he saved. We're okay. Or, I mean, we're not okay. He's okay. Best let's uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's get out of here. And turn there. These guys going to keep chasing? Or, no, they're not. I got seven turns. He's all the way up over here. We took a touch of damage there. You're almost down. But I can't get these hits, can I? Let's go in. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, see, we're gonna keep missing. There's there's no point. There's no point. Let's 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 deal with this transponder over here. We're in trouble otherwise. She's almost down already. Let's get out of here. So close. We were so close. The helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Check myself for injuries. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through. But it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. All right, ladies and gentlemen. 
We are on the ravaged beach. Kicking things off in earnest over here. That, though, is going to be where we're going to call it a session. Got a little bit over our usual hour mark that I like to keep these two. And chances are sessions will do that from time to time, considering this is a CRPG. And you never know when you find yourself in the middle of an interesting moment that you don't want to just let go of, obviously. But this feels like a good spot to stop for the time being. Folks, if you enjoyed this episode, if you'd like to see more Baldur's Gate 3 on the channel, please don't hesitate to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Again, if you have any thoughts or opinions on our character, on how he could evolve or play out over time. If you have any thoughts on the RPing or in my general approach to the series so far, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always open to feedback. If I can make things more enjoyable for you to watch in some way or another, let me know and uh, I'll, you know, take it all into consideration. With that said, though, having a good time so far. It's kind of wild to see just how different that opening segment actually was. I vaguely remember in the early access, uh, like right at the end there, when we were being flung out from the, uh, the, the Nautiloid, I remember how in early access, there was a whole section where you had to like climb the steps and go around. There were bodies to loot. There was like at least another battle with a bunch of intellect devourers and stuff. But I guess they realized that it wasn't so essential to have that anymore now that there is, you know, the rest of the game to experience. I, I imagine that's what happened there. Anyway, it is what it is, and what it is is a nice surprise, because it means that even if I vaguely remember some things, chances are they're completely different now, which is pretty cool. Anyway, folks, hope you had a good time. If you did, again, you know what to do. Let me know down below. But as always, of course, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.